The following is brought to you by Vertical Vet. Rethink your GPO. Today's webinar is brought to you by Neogen, makers of Provecta Advanced for Dogs and Provecta 2 for Cats. Visit ProvectaPet.com. Hello, Vertical Vet family. I am Dr. Ernie Ward, Chief Veterinary Officer, and it is my highest honor and privilege to welcome you to another edition of Vertical Vet's Vet Med School. And today, we're talking about preventive medicine and how inflation, or more specifically, petflation, could be interfering with some of the preventive care that we provide. I mean, let's face it, pet parents out there are starting to feel the crunch of a downward economy, and we wanna make sure that we are offering them the best in care at an affordable price. And today, we have got a very special guest to talk to us about ways that you can avoid letting inflation interfere with prevention. And I'm so happy to introduce you once again to a dear friend of mine, Dr. Caitlin DeWild. And many of you know her as the social vet but today she's going to be talking to us about how we can help our pet parents save money and so forth and if you're not familiar with her bio and it's very impressive i might add she's the founder of the social dbm which is a consulting firm helping veterinary professionals learn how to manage and grow their social media their online reputation we can all use that and marketing strategies she earned her DVM from the University of Illinois and is a recipient of their Outstanding Young Alumni Award. But before stepping back to focus on her marketing passion, she was a she was the medical director of a very large and prominent and well-respected hospital in St. Louis. Maybe she'll talk about that. Today, she divides her time between practice, consulting, and writing. She's the author of The Social Media and Marketing for Veterinary Professionals, a must-read textbook, in my opinion, and a columnist for today's veterinary business. So... You got two today's vet business columnists today, guys. Hey, Caitlin. Hey, thanks for having me, Ernie. Well, you know, Caitlin, this is one of those topics that we hear in the news all the time. Inflation, the economy, gas prices, grocery prices, and so forth. But we don't often hear of it in terms of petflation, right? And so you and I stay close to this stuff through the different things that we do. And, you know, this has been the, the a real concern over the past year. You know, I play a lot in the pet food world, and we're seeing pet food in increases, you know, up 12% nearly year over year. But, I mean, there's a lot more to it than just going up and in, in dog food and cat food, right? Right. It's it's really across the board. And, you know, pet owners, I think, are feeling it already. And it maybe hasn't exactly made it all the way down to our clinics, right? So we're not always thinking about it from the perspective of the services and products that we're recommending, but we're feeling it just as business owners, right? So right. we've got to kind of collate those two worlds, I think, for us to all move forward and be able to get through this in the next few years. Yeah, and Caitlin, I'm, I'm really glad you mentioned that because a lot of the Vertical Vet family, I mean, we, we are hearing your voices loudly, guys, at Vertical Vet. You know, you're feeling the crunch, right? We get it. Prices are going up. Distributors are going up. I mean, you know, pharmaceuticals, every supply is going up. And, and so we're hearing that end of it. But remember, just like we're feeling the crunch, a lot of our patients and pet parents are. And Caitlin, I think what I worry about, and I know that you're going to talk to us about today extensively, is the fact that this can impact preventive care measures, annual yeah. services, really more uh, disproportionately, I would argue. Yeah. And that's that's scary, right? Because we already have in our industry an access to care argument um, and, and challenge to deal with. We're dealing with our own staffing and you know all those kind of pressures. So it's hard to figure out What's the right thing to do? But at the end of the day, we're all here to make sure that pets and their families stay healthy. And the best way to do that and the most affordable way to do that is preventive care. But it is tricky because uh, about 73% of the pet owners are looking already to change their buying decisions. And some of the studies that have come out are showing that in addition to that, we're going to see continued pressures and continued changes in their spending, not only on their pet supplies, but unfortunately on their veterinary care as well. So like I said, about 70 to 80% of pet parents have already indicated that they're feeling the pressures from inflation or petflation, as you said, I love that, <laughs> that new term. I'm gonna work that into my vocabulary. But uh, right now it's only about 30% of pet owners in, in one of the recent studies said it's going to impact how much they visit, but all of them, like a huge percentage, uh, they're indicating that they are going to have to make changes. And some of those changes might be 
options. And that's something that we haven't necessarily had the luxury to, to worry about in our, um, in our practices. Um, it's something that during the pandemic, we were just like, here, here's the choice, right? <laughs> like right, get right. them out the door because we have to simplify and streamline this process. But now we need to step back and say, how can we continue to serve these people and these pets and families, but also still earn a profit, still do the right thing, keep our businesses afloat. So I think that's one thing that even me as a veterinarian in practice, I, ha I haven't really been thinking about that a lot, right? right? I haven't been spending a lot of time like, how can I adjust things <laughs> for the company? Right. The looming future, you know, you get out your crystal ball because we all have one of those um, and try to figure these things out. But I think it's smart for practices to really start thinking about this. Yeah. And that's why, again, you know, today's uh, edition is brought to us by our sponsors and, and partners over at, at Neogen. And they're going to talk to us. I mean, I know Caitlin's going to mention Provecta, but but that you're right. It's the choices. So, so again, you know, Vertical Vet Family, a lot of times historically, we've kind of picked our one best favoritist thingest, and that's what you got us, right? And uh that doesn't always satisfy today's economic needs, right? Because there are, we, we have a wide spectrum and strata of, of clients and some people can do the bestest and the greatest and the latest, right? But other people do need a more affordable option. I think that's why companies like Neogen are important to have in the mix. Yeah, I agree because we, we all hold ourselves to that gold standard, but at the end of the day, I, I want them to be protected, not necessarily protected with, the top best favorite product, right? So, and there, there are studies to show that we're seeing, you know, pet owners' perceptions, pet owners' understanding, pet owners' ability to afford these things. And we're seeing almost 50% of pet parents would like to be presented with more options. And from the veterinary perspective, when we think about, okay, if there's a recession looming or we're worried about you know, inflation. Now, all of a sudden, I used to make these orders of hundreds of thousands of dollars of heartworm and flea preventions, right, every year, because that was the best way to get the, the best deal, and we'd be stocked, and I wouldn't have to worry about it again. Um, but we would, we would buy these massive, massive quantities of this product, which then sat on shelves, which is concerning now, I know now, right, from an inventory standpoint, less than ideal. But also, we only had those six and 12 packs, right? And we had to buy cases of them. And that's one of the things I like about Provecta and Paradefense and a lot of Neogen's products, smaller quantities are required to order. So if you're looking to have options, maybe you don't need to buy 4,000 doses of the dog, like two to five pound size, right? That's <laughs> never gonna get used. You can buy these smaller quantities. And I think that's huge. And I wish I could have talked to you 25 years ago about that inventory management, but that, that's another story. But but you're right, because companies like Neogen are recognizing that pet parents are demanding alternatives. And and guys, if, if you don't believe it, just go on Chewy.com. I mean, they can order single doses of almost all of these things, or they can start to do an auto ship where they're only billed monthly for a much lower amount than buying a six or a 12 pack. Now, again, you know, Caitlin, let's, let's also kind of dial it back one step because Part of this equation of success, in my opinion, is going to be, okay, how do we manage our own cost? Now, you mentioned one strategy of we used to buy in and the shelf pressure and all that sort of stuff. and and But today, I think we've got to say, okay, can I save money on the individual and how much inventory should I be carrying? So I think that, you know, we do need to revisit. And, and guys, if you haven't seen, you know, back over the past few years, we've done several editions of our business academy on inventory yeah. management. So if you haven't seen some of those, go back through the archives on the website at verticalvet.com and check those out. But but again, what are some of the strategies that you're recommending for that vet who's saying, okay, I hear you, Ernie, and I know I've got to offer options, but how's this going to save me money? Right. So I think one of the first things is to assess what you have, right? Which a, a lot of us kind of get it on the shelves and we forget about it, right? So assess what you have and assess how can we give an option. A lot of practices don't have those options, right? Right now they're like, gold standard this product, gold standard that product, and they may not have a secondary or tertiary level. And while I don't want any of the inflation and or the inventory experts would, would probably punch me if I was like, you should have 17 different options. I think it's important to pick a few, two to three 
key products that will satisfy a range of costs from both the, the clinic's perspective and the pet owner's perspective. Um, but when we look at that, we can think about how can we, as a clinic, not invest thousands of dollars in product that's sitting there, right? How can we move that quickly? And that is not only looking at the product as veterinarians, we're the first ones to, okay, what does it cover? Um, what's the guarantee? You know, what are the clinical studies? But maybe look at what's the buy-in, right? What, what quantities do I have to buy in order to get this on the shelves or bring it to my practice? And I think that's something that has changed for all products since the pandemic. And is a good time for veterinarians to look at that. Yeah. And Caitlin, the other thing too, is let's remember many of these are legacy products. I mean, these aren't like untested unknown compounds. In fact, those are really the cutting edge that we're talking right. about. So, you know, if you're looking for options, I mean, I always tell people go with what you know, right? And now right. what you're finding is that because many of these are off patent protection, that there are a wide variety of manufacturers that are making them at different price points, as you mentioned, and different quantities and so forth. And, and I think we need to revisit that. Now, now Caitlin, one thing too, I'd like to, to kind of point out is right now we are focusing on, you know, Neogen has some fantastic parasiticides, but right. we also need to look at our strategies towards just preventive care services. And now I'm going to yeah. dig into vaccines, annual exams, because I think that is, is at risk in 2023 if this economy sort of slows down even further. I agree. And I, that's scary, right? Because again, in the long run, it's much more affordable for a pet owner to invest in preventative care than wait until there's a problem, right? But explaining that and conveying that and giving them, maybe that's just not in their abilities at the moment, right, to, to care for. So I think one thing that we maybe could think about as practices is letting people know ahead of time. So my, one of my biggest things, and we're starting this at my practice, is trying to, again, promote options but secondly, letting them know what their pet is due for and what's recommended and what that cost is before they even get to the clinic. So I think traditional model, right? And that kind of even went out of the, the window during a uh, pandemic, but traditional model is we tell them they're due, they come in, and then we tell them what the cost is, right? And they don't know a lot of the times. They have no idea what to expect. Um, they might have forgotten. And especially in the last few years when they weren't coming in or they weren't having traditional experiences at the vet clinic, they are unaware of the costs associated and of our recommendations. So we've been trying to send estimates along with reminders ahead of time. Here's what you can expect. This is what we would recommend. And here's the cost. This also helps with the, okay, well, grandma had to bring in the dog, right? And she has no idea if that's okay or not on the blood work. Um, so that's one good advantage. The second good advantage is we also say, if we need to talk about splitting this up or managing these, um, these expenses a little bit differently, let's talk about that and letting them know that that's an option. Yeah, I remember too, Caitlin, back in 08, 09, we had, of course, the Great Recession. And I, I remember really, you know, imploring vets not to be judgmental of clients during this time, right? Because a lot of, I mean, we all can remember some of that. And, and people would just said, I can't do this. I can't afford the annual visits. And they stopped coming. And I think a lot of times vets then, you know, sort of created an adversarial relationship. It's like, well, you know, you don't care for your pet or whatever. So we got to A, be careful not to judge these people because we don't understand their, their total circumstances. The other thing too is, Caitlin, you, know, you and I have long been advocates for giving estimates. And I think there are still a large number of our colleagues that view when a client requests an estimate as also being unreasonable or difficult client. And guys, let me tell you, that's the most reasonable request they can ask you for. How much is it going to be? Because they often don't know. Now, I do want to be sensitive. Uh, certain locales, certain states have regulations on whether or not you can advertise certain prices and so forth. So I don't want to get into that. But what Caitlin is describing is the same strategy that we use for years. And that is to if it's a client and they're booking an appointment, say, hey, if you want, I can just send you over, you know, how much it's going to be. And, and we can kind of go from there, especially if there's any cost concerns. You know, Caitlin, what do you see? I mean, why do we still see so much pushback amongst our colleagues uh, for giving an estimate? Yeah, I'm not sure. I think, you know, again, I, I worry that it's a little bit of that gold standard, right? Like you, sh you should do this and this is the cost of owning a pet, right? And that is what we'd love to believe. And we love, I think it's because we're all passionate about 
we want that to be done. We want that level of care to be done for every pet. Um, and it's hard when we can't necessarily wrap our brains around what does that look like to not be able to do that, right? And that's a huge standard of care, access to care, you know, whole topic we could get into. But I think what's important to think about is the reality is these people are still coming to us. They still want to do something for their pet. They want to do as much as they can but maybe they can't do it all or maybe they can't do it all right now and unfortunately if we ignore that if we ignore that perception and we ignore that um unfortunate truth for some people they are going to look for care elsewhere and whether that comes from us um, in terms of services they might just not come anymore because if they feel like they're judged or they're not allowed to try then I don't blame them sometimes for wanting right. to look for care elsewhere. Right. And, and again, you know, guys, uh, this is something that Caitlin and I have written and lectured about, you know, for many years, me for many decades. And that is the fact that, you know, you always have to, I think, do two things. Number one, understand that they're there volitionally. They're, that nobody's sure. making them unless they got a rabies card from the animal control, right? So nobody's making them come to see our, 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 our clinics, right? The other part of this issue for me is one of, okay, I need to make sure I'm in this for the long haul for the pet, right? So if I dismiss them today, if I'm judgmental, if I'm, you know, somehow creating this adversarial relationship, you know, Caitlin, they may never come back uh, to a vet, right? They may, who, who knows? I mean, with online services, they, they can circumvent a lot of, of what we really offer and what their pet needs. Yeah. And I think that goes back also to the products too. It's services and products. And if we only give them one option and it's the top dollar and they've already had to spend the, their maybe their monthly budget or maybe their quarterly budget for their pet on just the exam and you know the services that we have, we know that in three more months when they have more money or six months or next week or whatever the case may be, they're not necessarily going to come back to us for those products if they think our only option was option A at you know 60 bucks a month. They're going to look online and they're going to get something that maybe is unsafe for their pet or is a product that we wouldn't recommend. So I'd much rather have a range of products. I'd like to offer single dosing if that's what they need. Right. I'd like to offer, you know, there's the oral medication, but we also have topical. Um, so that at least they walk out the door with prevention, they walk out the door with protection. And I think that's one of the, the key things to take home because at the end of the day, that's how we're gonna keep those pets safe. And that's how we're gonna keep those people safe, right? From some of these parasitic diseases that we're talking about. So what's remarkable to me, you know, is that, I mean, there were no neogens 20 years ago. I mean, this is kind of a new category that is offering, you know, cost affordable options that back in the day we just didn't have. I think, I think that's also indicative of today's pet parent needs. Yes, for sure. I think it's awesome that they are, I think of the products that we're talking about, especially Provecta, they're, they're, you know, aware that there are other products out there, right? There's oral pr products out there. There've been legacy topical products for decades, you know, and their product has been around for a long time as well. But what they've looked at is how do we make this work for the veterinarian? And how do we make this work for the pet owner? So the science is there. That I think that that's huge. Well, something that is really, again, going to benefit both parties. Yeah. And again, I, I just, I want us to offer options. And one of the things we've seen, of course, is the, is the emergence of auto shipment, you know, subscription-based services and so forth. And, and so talk to us a little bit about that, because I think that what's really been a lot of the impetus behind that drive and transition towards these auto ship monthly has actually been, as you mentioned, splitting up the payments. I mean, we saw this thing coming a decade ago and suddenly it's like, you know, you, sticker shock of a 12 month supply of whatever. If I can divide that over 12, that's a lot more palatable. So maybe what are your what are your thoughts around auto shipping and and working you know setting up clients on subscriptions and so forth i think that's going to be one of our keys to success moving forward you know if we've got a client that isn't able to afford what we're recommending right now it doesn't mean that they can't afford what we're recommending when it's split up over a time period and so i think that um, when we're forced to compete with online pharmacies right we still want to be the source of their information their um, and their products. And the best way to do that is 
to offer some of the things that these online pharmacies are offering, right? Like you mentioned already, some of these online um, online stores where people can set up auto shipments, they can even get single dose um, auto shipment uh, so that they'll come in and they can split that cost up, but they can also um, make that convenient and make that affordable. When we say your only option is to buy 12 months right now today, that's not going to be palatable for a lot of people. So however that looks, and I think there's a lot of strategies, it does not mean that you have to send them manually every month and you know deal with billing every month. That's, that's maybe a labor intensive thing that does not work for an auto shipment from your own practice, but you can let them know if they need to come in and pick that up once a month, that that's an option. The second thing is thinking about reminders for um, when they are going to be due, due. Let's say they can only afford three months. That's fine. Let's put a reminder in our system for two and a half months to say, hey, you're going to run out of your preventative. Can we help you? Can we facilitate getting a refill, right? There's a lot of low tech ways to do that. Of course, there's ways to do that with your own online pharmacy as well. But I think adopting some of these mentalities and even utilizing our practice management systems a little bit more to allow for purchasing smaller quantities and then setting up auto um, automatic reminders on when they are going to be due will help them stay compliant. Yeah. And, and again, look, Vertical Vet family, I know the topic none of us like to talk about, especially with clients, is money, but we've got to confront it, right? Because I do fear that 2023 could be a bumpy ride economically for our country and the world. And so I think we're going to have to get a little more comfortable saying, hey, you know, here's an estimate. How does that sound? <laughs> if they go, uh, you know, giving them an option. And again, you know, I, I think, Caitlin, at the end of the day, having done this for over 30 years, I, I've really learned that you've got to be a lot more forgiving of clients and understanding. And I think that, you know, you've got to say not, they can't do it every time. So forgive them sometimes for, I, I didn't get my vaccines last year because my husband lost his job. Right. And then you've got to be understanding that during that exact visit, they may not be able to do everything on that list, whether it's preventive care or sick care. And, you know, Caitlin, I think that, that if you can kind of change the mindset a little bit and, and not have this sort of debate mentality of, well, I'm here to beat you up and win this, this argument, then, you know, life's a lot better and practice is more fulfilling. I don't know. That's old guy talking. <laughs> no, I totally agree because it's, it, it's been a hard few years for our industry, right? And it's, it's easy to fall into a cynical mindset and a frustrated mindset, yeah. right? But at the end of the day, you and I would have done anything to get into vet school so that we could be a veterinarian. And our technicians were, were just thrilled to be able to go through tech school and get a job in the field that they loved. And we loved that and we were so excited and we, we made untold sacrifices to be able to care for pets because we knew that it was a great thing to do. And it's hard sometimes to always remember that and keep that top of mind. Right. But at the end of the day, that's the only way I can like stay not just miserable in practice, right? <laughs> On those bad days, I gotta like, sometimes I gotta dig deep to remember that, right? <laughs> I totally agree. But again, getting back to making happy, we, we've got to pay a living wage. We've got to do better at taking care of our staff and ourselves. And, and Caitlin, this is where, again, profitability becomes so critical. I mean, yeah. all those years ago when I kept harping on profitability, you know, and, and giving yeah. you my numbers and showing you how we were doing different things. Well, the reason we focused on that was because we could take that profit and then apply Apply it to whatever we chose, right? Buying new equipment, new hospitals, new staff, more benefits, right. more pay. And 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 so with we have products like Provecta, you know, I think where people sometimes mistake is they go, well, wait, I'm making actually more dollars on this other product. But if you're selling fewer, then you're actually at a net loss or right. you know, your revenue isn't. So I think it's really important to to do the math, right? Right. And not tie up a huge amount of your of your income into buying those big giant quantities that are going to sit on your shelves for six, nine, 12 months before they're purchased, right? So buying those smaller quantities now frees up more monthly income, just like we're talking with our, our pet owners that may not have the monthly budget to be able to do X, Y, and Z. It's the same for our practices. So if we are not sunk in thousands and thousands of dollars that's sitting on the shelves, but instead 
found a product that works with our inventory, works with our costs, and allows us to have smaller quantities and be more affordable for our clients as well. I think that's a win-win. It's a win-win-win because the pet also wins. Uh, so, Caitlin, as we sort of wrap up today's conversation, you know, any like if you had to, you're now talking to a young manager or a practice owner, or, you know, it's, it's somebody out there who's trying to make these decisions and they're overwhelmed with choices, right? They've got five different distributors and drug reps coming in and saying we got the best and this is better and blah blah blah. But how do you see through some of that fog and and you know define that clear path? So, what's that little list of things? that you would say, hey, here's some, some simple advice that you maybe should consider the next time before you make that big, big purchase? Absolutely. So I think, there's, I think there's three steps. I think the first one is think about options. When we're looking particularly at parasiticides, I think that's a look at an oral option, look at a topical option, right? Hard stop there. Um, I think obviously looking at options for uh, services and care is another great path. Um, that's probably a little bit bigger project, but something to, to consider. I think the second thing I would really recommend doing is look at what's the workflow for being more proactive with your estimates. I think that's something that when we give clients a heads up, this is what's recommended, but also if this doesn't work for you, let's work together to make it work right? So giving them, so they don't have that sticker shock, right? Giving them a heads up on what's coming and what's recommended, that allows them to budget, split up costs if necessary, but they're going to still spend their money with the veterinarian and they're not going to look for other options. And then that third thing is to, that I would really invest some time in is to think about again, workflows and, um, what parts of your practice management system could you be utilizing to be more proactive about refills, whether that's setting someone up with refills, auto shipment with your online pharmacy or going low tech in your own practice? How do we help you get smaller doses, set up reminders, again, allowing those clients to split up their costs, but ultimately continue the relationship whether that's just coming in and or spending money with their veterinarian. So again, we're always going to retain that relationship, the trust that we've built over years and years, and we're going to be the source of information and of quality products to keep their pets safe. Wow. I love it. Couldn't have said it better myself. Dr. Caitlin DeWild, The Social DVM. You can check her out at thesocialdvm.com. And definitely, you know, we want to thank our sponsor today, Neogen, for just providing amazing products like Perfecta and others to, to help us with this. So, Caitlin, thank you so much for, for sharing your time and expertise with the Vertical Vet family. Happy to do so. Thanks for having me on. Well, guys, that's it. Another edition of Vet Med School in the can. Dr. Caitlin DeWild, I really want to thank Neogen once again for not only sponsoring this segment and being a, an important partner for Vertical Vet, but for actually offering choices, right? So we need more choices today. We need to be able to provide a spectrum of care and treat all of the strata of, of pa patients that we see on a daily basis. So it's nice to have options. It's nice to have choices and it's nice to have partners like Neogen. So thank you so much. Guys, on behalf of the entire family here over at Vertical Vet, we want to thank you for watching. Uh, if you're not a Vertical Vet member yet, why not? Uh, it's a great deal on so many levels and you get access to not only fun content like this, but we are here to guide you as we all navigate what might be an interesting 2023. Let's hope it's all better for all of us. And we know it's going to be better for our Vertical Vet family. So again, verticalvet.com. Check us out if you want to find out more about Neogen and some of the amazing specials that they are offering to our Vertical Vet membership. Also contact us and we will set you up. Guys, I am Dr. Ernie Ward, Chief Veterinary Officer. It's been my pleasure. Talk to you soon. Bye.